All right, hello everybody. Um, so today I'm gonna discuss. Uh, I'm gonna talk about uh, integrals. So in front of me, you have. Um, uh, I have the uh, FE handbook, the EIT handbook, FE slash EIT. They used to call it EIT, but anyway, um, this is the uh, math portion of it. I mean, I know I started and I stopped at differential equations, but, but it's been a while. But today I'll talk about um, integrals. So this is the page for integral. So you might want to go there and check it out a little bit. You don't have to memorize it really, but uh, just familiarize yourself with it. So you know exactly what page it is, you know um, where to go, and kind of, there are some of them that uh, we sort of know and we kind of know, memorize them, but there are some of them you definitely have to go back and look. So we'll practice a little bit here, going back and forth, doing um, a problem here, and then uh, looking at the uh, the formulas. Alright, so the problem over here is to basically simplify the following, which I'll be writing. Uh, you might notice that I'm actually doing a voice narration, so I did the problem already and then I'm talking over it, so bear with me here if I'm talking a little bit overboard. But uh, yeah, so the integral is basically 4 over 8 plus 2x squared. I know I used to not put any audio in it, and then I, uh, you know, I got a couple messages telling me, hey, why not? Why don't you put audio? I thought it was just easier, but apparently not so moving forward I will be uh, putting some audio in it okay so basically uh, we are given an integral here 4 over 8 plus 2x squared d of x so what we want to do here is to we see a 4 8 2 so automatically what we want to do is to simplify this if we factor out uh, 4 and 8 here um, to basically factor it out, okay? Alright, so I think that's where I forgot to put the 8 here. Um, essentially, if we take out 4 and 8, what are we gonna get? Yeah, 4 and 8. Alright, okay, so if you take out 4 over 8, on top we're left with 1 at the bottom 8 divided by 8 will be 1 and then you take out um, for the 2 you will have a fraction basically which will be x squared over 4 because when you put it back 8 over 4 will be 2 so that's how you factor it out so here I forgot the integral so don't forget about it and the dx too but yeah so uh, 4 over 4 is um, uh, 1 half, you simplify that. So you take out the 1 half because it's a constant, doesn't necessarily have to be a part of the integral, so you can take it out of it. And so you're left with 1 over 1 plus x squared over 4, d of x. Okay, so now we can't simplify anymore. We can go to the table and see which one is matching which one we have to use because at that particular point we can't really move forward at all. We have to use one of these um, uh, integral. So we have to select one of them. It's a matter of recognition. Um, it's a pattern that you have to recognize really. So looking at this on top, I don't see anything that really looks like our problem here. So going back down. There you have x equal, I mean u equals x over 2 so um, d over u is um, 1 half of d of x so when you come back here and replace it I forget the d of x
so uh, one half of uh, d of x is pretty much du as written over there and so um, x squared over 4 is u uh, u squared because u was x over 2 alright so if we go back down here we can recognize here that uh, that's the tangent minus 1 tangent I don't know they call it tangent inverse or something but anyway it's that one um, number 24 because we have 1 over 1 plus u squared so we can go back to our problem and basically we're done here Oh, that's supposed to be du instead of dx. Now I'll just notice it, but essentially um, it's just a matter of recognizing and simplifying and looking at a pattern. So here you have tangent minus 1 of u plus c, and then you can replace back the u, which was x over 2. So that's tangent minus 1 of x over 2 plus c. So that's our final answer. So it's not really that bad. Once we simplify and we replace our uh, values, uh, it's pretty much straightforward from there. Okay, so the d of x is d supposed to be du. I'm just so used to as a student we are as students we are used to x and y's that's probably why alright so let's practice another one this is pretty much a um, area problem I see that in different books sometimes they give you this instead of just giving you a problem straightforward and tell you hey do this integral you know take the derivative of this they give you word problems because there is a uh, def you know it integral is, is the definition of something I mean area under the curve is essentially you know part of that is integrals and derivatives so um, you should recognize that as well so here the problem is what is the area under the curve y equals 1 over x between y equals 2 and y equals 10 so for the most part area under the curve means you know you gotta take some sort of integral or you know rate of change or some type of derivative or integral so here in this particular case um, because they gave us between some numbers we gotta take the integral under that <coughs> so here as you notice as y's and x's so naturally we would want to do you know taking the uh, integral between 2 and 10 but 2 and 10 are um, in f uh, it's a function of y but we're dealing with x's here so you can't really mix apples and oranges you can't take the derivative of 1 over x and the limit will be 2 and 10 because those are uh, functions of y so we gotta change those that's why uh, we change the uh, limits from y equals 2 to x equals one half so because we are dealing with x's only that's why we have changed that and you have been given y equals one over x so essentially x equals one one over y alright so we change our limits to uh, that and um, again it's a matter of of recognizing one over x what's one over x normally that's pretty straightforward I mean um, after you do the simplification it's just a matter like I said earlier a matter of recognition so over here 1 over x you know x u whatever 1 over whatever whenever 1 over <laughs> 1 over x or 1 over y is, is ln 
is ln, you know, the log function ln of x. So we have ln of x between one half and one ten. All right, so we have ln of one half minus ln of one ten. So take your calculator, plug it in. You should you should get your answer, your final answer. So this is a scalar. This is a number, and it turns out to be one point six one. So that's our final answer. So um, this is pretty basic, uh, but that's you know part of the FE. Again, uh, going back to our table, it really does help, but if I've heard that uh, you know for the morning we don't necessarily have that much time so I would recommend really getting yourself familiarized with the tables thanks